It's time for Blue Jay Sports on KQNK. Hello and welcome to Travis Field at Dick Boyd Stadium. Trent Alexander, Nish Millen, Sig Millen here. We're getting ready for the kickoff of the Norton Blue Jays against the Goodland Cowboys. Goodland comes in with a 1-3 and three record. Blue Jays 4-0 and oh on the year. And Trent, uh, as we all can remember, last year Blue Jays go into Goodland with a 4-0 and oh record and lose in overtime to the Goodland Cowboys. Also losing that day, we lost about three skilled players right. there and a lineman and a defensive lineman. So that was kind of one of those uh, bad days there after the Blue Jays go, I believe, one and four, maybe two and three, I believe, thereafter. So uh, that was a highly uh, multiple senior class. A lot of those leadership went down. But, uh, you know, the flip side of that is that it brought in younger classmates to – uh, come in and, and furnish the line and furnish the skill positions, and those are the seniors and juniors today. So, I guess a little bit of good came with a little bit of a lot of bad. But uh, you know, here we are, Goodland uh, losing to two Colorado schools, winning over Lake and, and losing to a highly ranked Holcomb Longhorns uh, team in their league. So, you know, Goodland's uh, somebody to be looking after. Yeah, like I said, pretty hard hitting team. I think, like I said, they played some bigger schools and some schools that can, you know, come to play have a good program. So, Norton's going to have their hands full tonight. Um, I, you know, they come in. I feel like with Norton comes in with a lot of confidence. You know, obviously the schedule, but um, also being homecoming, I think that adds a little might add a little pep to their step in front of this um, pretty full hometown crowd over here tonight. Uh, great crowd for the Blue Jays. I think that should add to it as well. I'm looking for a really great, hard-hitting ball game here tonight. Like I said the, the big thing for us is to hopefully stay away from injuries because we were, especially running backs last year, um, pretty hard on running backs last year. So hopefully we can get through this uh, fairly healthy and and uh, get a win tonight. As we mentioned, uh, this is homecoming night, and we just had the crowning of royalty. And uh, tonight, or t- your 2003 homecoming king is Roman Hauser, your homecoming queen is Mackenzie Clydesdale. Congratulations on those two seniors as Mackenzie is uh, involved in cross country and Roman tonight will be uh, heard here on the radio as he's number 17 as the homecoming king here of the Norton Blue Jays. So a lot of excitement here. Class of 2003 here tonight for their class reunion. Uh, Hopefully those reunions keep coming because you know what? We won the last one, too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so hopefully uh, we can get a victory for the class of 2003 uh, there tonight. And as we await the, uh, the Blue Jays to come on the field, I don't know if they're going to do the National Anthem first or if they're going to wait for the Blue Jays to come out. But uh, they're about ready to come out. As they come out of the locker room, get ready to run in here on Travis Field. About six minutes till the kickoff here at Travis Field. And again, it's the Blue Jays against the Cowboys of Goodland. As the Blue Jays line up, get ready to break through here. Nice crowd down there waiting for them as well. All right, Blue Jays 4 0, 1 and 3 for the Goodland Cowboys tonight. Out of district play and out of league for both teams as they had a bye week, so they combined a couple games against each other here tonight in order to make sure that they don't rest and they give a pretty good uh, game tonight for both. As the Blue Jays come running out of the gauntlet, it's led by number 70 senior Connor Schoenberger. He also was a candidate today for homecoming king. As the Blue Jays huddle up there on the 48-yard line. Blue Jays anchored by five seniors here uh, this year. Because we'll see all five of those on the field throughout the night. As we'll line up here for the National Anthem, we'll send it back to the station. We'll listen to KQNK, 106.7 AM and FM, North. 
If you're hearing a little strange noise from your vehicle, it's time that you give your car some TLC. At Ingo Sales and Service, they have a great selection of parts and accessories, and their expert mechanics will help you with your car maintenance and repairs. So swing by Ingo Sales and Service, where your car deserves the best, and they've got it for you. Drive in, drive out, and drive happy with Ingo Sales and Service, your best car's friend. Visit them today at 209 West Lincoln in Norton. Are you ready to build your dream project and equip your home with the latest appliances? At Cowpoke Supply, they offer a wide variety of high-quality lumber, from sturdy hardwoods to durable softwoods, ensuring your project is built to last. Cowpoke's appliance department features top-of-the-line household appliances from trusted brands. Whether you're upgrading your kitchen or refreshing your laundry room, they have it all. Visit them today on East Highway 36 in Norton. Cowpoke Supply, where your dreams take shape and your home comes to life. Iron Insurance Partners of Norton, Kansas is stronger together and offering to insure what matters most to you. Full service insurance with friendly hometown faces. Whether you're looking for agriculture, commercial, homeowners, or auto insurance, they can help. Stop in at 117 North Kansas or call 877-4016. Open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. Iron Insurance Partners of Norton, stronger together and offering to insure what matters most to you. Norton County Hospital and Medical Clinics would like to wish our Blue Jays and Huskies the best of luck this school year. Remember to please wear your safety gear properly and stay plenty hydrated. Parents, we want to remind you that our medical clinic is here to keep your athletes healthy year-round. Our physical therapy department is also available to help students perform at their very best. Call the medical clinic at 785-877-3305 or physical therapy at 785-874-2222. Go fight win and make Norton County proud. At New Age Industrial, we take great pride in our aluminum products by designing and manufacturing cutting-edge equipment for a variety of industries while maintaining the highest level of customer service. We're a global aluminum extruder and fabricator and one of the area's largest employers. Not only do we take great pride in our products, but we're also proud supporters of the area's students and athletes. We'll be cheering them on all season long. To learn more, visit us online at newageindustrial.com. Welcome back to Travis Field at Dick Boyd Stadium. The North Blue Jays 4-0 on the year against the Goodland Cowboys as the captains will come out to meet in the middle of the field. About a minute and a half remaining until the kickoff. So tonight's captains will be number 10, Eli Jones. Number 21, uh, Bodie Fonestil. Number 1, Ty Smelvin. And number 17, Roman Hauser. Boy, I can't see the numbers on there. <laughs> I believe it's led by number 3, uh, Lincoln Kerr, number 54, 54 uh, being Blair Lynn, number 17. And number 17 is L.J. Purvis, and I couldn't make out the, the fourth one. <laughs> yeah, they got the bright yellow letters on their white jerseys tonight. As they're dressed in black helmets with the yellow stripe down the middle and white jersey and bright yellow numbers with black pants. Northern Blue Jays dressed in their home blues, yellow helmet, and yellow pants. So hopefully that uh, we won't get that mixed up. Tonight. Right. <laughs> so Blue Jays, no indication on who won the flip period just yet. And it looks like the instructions have all been given out. And the referee reaches into his pocket. And let's see if the flip has occurred. Might be on number 55. It's going to be Gret Rig. Hi, Rig. Blue Jays win the toss, and they will defer as the Goodland Cowboys would take the going west, excuse me, west to east. As we are on Facebook Live tonight, go to KQNK AM FM 1530, 102.5 FM and 106.7 FM. You can see the live streaming here at Travis Field, Dick Boyd Stadium, and, of course, on 106.7 and 102.5 
on your radio dial and, of course, tune in. Just look for the free KQK app, and that will bring you into your Android and Apple phones, iPads, or even Apple TV. So a lot of different ways to be listening and watching the game tonight here at Travis Field Dick Boyd Stadium. As we are getting ready for the kickoff here at as the Norton Blue Jays put their undefeated record on on the line against the Goodland Cowboys, one and three. Goodland, a uh, member of the Great America, Great Western uh, Athletic League, which has Scott City, I believe, which is undefeated still. Uh, they have Hugoton, Holcomb, Holcomb undefeated and highly ranked, Cimarron, um, then Goodland and Colby. I believe Ulysses in that, so some upper schools, some higher uh I call them yeah, ranked schools. There's some good programs out yeah. west. So that is uh, what the, the Blue Jays will be facing tonight. Not to say that the mid continent League's any, but any no worse, but they're a little yeah. bit smaller schools. Yeah. I'm not seeing, is that Kerr and number, number nine and number four? Okay, so that's going to be Jackson Miller and Jesus Sacido back for the Gillen Cowboys. I don't see Lincoln Kerr out there as he is usually a returner himself, so hard uh, person to bring down. Trayvon Mordecai, high kick straight up, and it's to be taken. Mm. 40. No fair catch was called. It's t- taken by number 15, M- Monte Mendez. As the Goodland Cowboys will start off in Blue Jay territory at the Blue Jay 48-yard line. And not the best kickoff there, but Blue Jays got down and got it covered anyway. Fortunate enough, it was high enough to where they had the, they were given time to get there. So first and 10 for Goodland, 11.57 left in this first te- first quarter as they will come out in the shotgun formation with, the, with Kerr split out to the right side. One single back. It's a running play up the middle, and he's going to be stopped in there by number 35, Fonestiel. Brennan Fonestiel is it right in the backfield. Almost took that hand, or if there was a handoff, he would have took it because he was back there in a hurry. No gain, maybe a loss of one on the play. Johnson uh, on the uh, run, rush, and a loss of one. These are more going to be direct stabs than... They have Johnson as a running back, not a quarterback. They put Kerr swinged out to the right side, and it's going to be number eight, Cicito, this time, as he's going to get a few yards back for the Cowboys. Oh, that's Goodwin. Excuse me. Chayton Goodwin. Number 32, Logan Fonestiel squeezing in there to trip him up. Other Blue Jays in there as well. Game of about four. Should bring up about third and seven for the Cowboys. We welcome you here on Facebook Live as the Goodland Cowboys face with a third and seven situation with 10.50 left here in this first quarter in Blue Jay territory as a drop back pass. And it's going to be knocked down in there. But number eight for the Cowboys, good one, had Got up the pitch, dropped back for a pass, and it was knocked down. So I don't put that Roman down. Hauser who got in there on that. He was in there chasing it, but I don't think he was the one that was actually knocked the ball down. Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven was Stover. Okay, Stover, yeah. Yeah. So fourth and seven now for the Cowboys. Ten forty-two left. Tyce Melvin drops back for the Blue Jays as he will stand about on the fifteen-yard line of the Blue Jays. Number four. For the Cowboys, gets a short kick, angling it off to the right side. It'll go out of bounds at the 28-yard line of Norton. Roman Hauser putting the pressure on, kind of made him kick that ball off the side of his foot a little bit. First and 10 for the Blue Jays in Blue Jay territory. 10, territory, 10-34 left here in this first quarter. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. As you'll notice a new piece of equipment that we uh, have gotten and to show we are able to put the picture of the scoreboard in your upper left hand corner uh, for you people that like to watch the clock first and 10 for the Blue Jays Tice Melvin he'll be put out to the near side as it's going to be Bodie 
Bonnestill out to the far side. I formation for the Blue Jays as Eli Jones will come up underneath center. Takes the snap, drops back, looking for how, uh, Tyson Melvin. He has him open. And there's going to be pass interference as Melvin had to wait for that to come down. In the meantime, number nine for the Cowboys, Cicito, interferes with the catch. Yeah, it's a nice job by Tice Melvin, kind of waiting for that ball in the air, turning around for it. Probably would have had it if it wasn't for the interference. Right. Tice had about a two, he two had, steps, yeah. maybe three steps on Cicito, and that uh, Cicito was able to catch up due to the height on that pass. But it's going to be first and ten for the Blue Jays. They're going to take it at the 44-yard line, only 10-yard penalty. First and ten for the Blue Jays. 10-27 left here in this first quarter. Zero to zero. They come up into the I formation. And we're going to have flag or legal procedure call. And they're going to be called on the wide receiver, Tice Melvin. Yeah, I think number nine actually started backpedaling. It kind of caught Tice off guard there a little bit. And Tice jumped, uh, causing the penalty. The Blue Jays faced with their first penalty. Goodland had theirs on the pass interference. So 10-26 remaining here in the first quarter. Ball will be resting at the 39-yard line of the Blue Jays, and now it's a first and 15 as the split receivers left and the right. Back to the I formation. It's going to be Will Lauer and Bachman in the backfield. Eli Jones hands it off to Bachman. Bachman cuts up around off the left guard, cuts back to the middle, gets about 10 yards on that play. That was a nice little run up the middle from Bachman. Kind of lowered his shoulder there at the end, but if he could have broke one, he could have been free. Right down the middle was wide open. And that's something that we haven't really seen a lot of Tyler Backman is getting free up the middle. His forte is actually around the end, but it's nice to see that he's willing to go up the middle. Second and five for the Blue Jays. It's going to be Fonsville to the near side, Melvin to the far side. Back in the eye formation is the Blue Jays. Eli Jones hands it off to the fullback, and that's going to be Will Lauer still on his feet. I thought he was down about three yards, but he's going to get about another four out off of that. Will Lauer, like the human bulldozer down there, they made contact with him. Several Cowboys made contact. Will Lauer just kind of split through them and rumbled and stumbled for another three yards. Will Lauer, one of those defensive guys and fullbacks last year that was hurt, at Goodland, and that ended, that ended his season for the year. So, good to see Logan back out on the field. First and ten for the Blue Jays, 9-18 left here in the first. Back to the I formation. Jones, he's going to go back to Willauer. Oh, he's going to keep it himself. I'm sorry, as he cuts across, still on his feet as he's going to be brought down about the 18-yard line of, of the Goodland Cowboys. I don't think you're the only one he faked out there, Fig, and several Cowboys boys um, didn't really know who had the ball either. Eli just kind of weaving his way through traffic down there for a nice gain. 19-yard gain in there for Eli Jones as he gives the Blue Jays another first and 10. They'll mark it at the 17-yard line of the Cowboys as they'll put Melvin to the far side, Bonestill to the near side. Blue Jays not having any troubles in that I formation. They're going to stay in it for a little while. As Jones, he goes in there to Backman. Backman will go up the middle. He will get back to, he might one yard gain on the play. Eight twenty four remaining here in this first quarter. As the Norton Blue Jays in Cowboy territory. All resting at the 16. I really like how Eli runs that option because he faked that defensive end out enough and, sh- and to get him away from the middle. They'll put Backman on the slot receiver to the left. Hauser will go left to right into motion as he slows down and gets an extra blocker, and it's going to be Jones. Jones goes off the right tackle, and he gets it up to about the four-yard line. That was really a nice play call. Hauser kind of using Hauser as the lead back there, ma- making the way for Jones to run behind him. Worked out extremely well for the Blue Jays. 
get a nice – you guys give a shout-out to that offensive line, get a nice push up front, especially on that right side. Um, what a gaping hole there for Jones to run through. As Hauser also was not a featured blocker in that, too, to give him some additional yardage. 734 remaining here in the first quarter. Again, it's going to be Jones barking out some instructions. He comes up underneath center. As he's going to, he sees that tackle pull out. The end, yeah. They actually and tackled him, but Jones went over the defender's body and was able to land in the end zone without touching the turf. Well, I, that there's a big gaping hole there just off the left of the center, and that tackle drove forward. Yeah, and, right. And Jones seen that. Hey, he's not looking for me. <laughs> so he yeah. just took it, took it right on in, and that was a, what was that a four yard? Yep. Four-yard yeah. run in there for Zone Eli dive. Jones. Extra point try in there by Jones. The holder's Tice Melvin. Connor Schoenberger, your snapper. And a line drive kick, and it is good. So the North Blue Jays with 7-17 remaining on the, the first quarter. Score first on a four-yard run by Eli Jones. With unlimited guesses, I bet you still can't name everything available for your farm, vehicle, and more at Roy Sells and Service in Norton. Owners Brian and Kate Fonden still are proud to serve Norton and the surrounding area. They have interstate batteries, auto parts, oil, welding supplies, DeWalt and Milwaukee power tools, kids' farm toys, farm equipment supplies, and so much more. Come out and see everything at Roy Sells and Service on East Highway 36. You won't believe how much they have for you right here in Norton. Yep, it's that time of year again. As the seasons change, so does your health and wellness needs. At Moffat Drug, they've got you covered from head to toe. If you're feeling under the weather, no worries. The friendly pharmacists are there to help you find the perfect remedies for those pesky fall colds and allergies. And don't forget to get your flu shots and essential vitamins to stay in tip-top shape all season long. Remember, your health is their top priority at Moffat Drug, downtown Norton, where autumn meets wellness. Welcome back to Travis Field, Dick Boyd Stadium. As the Norton Blue Jays scoring a four-yard run by Eli Jones off the left side. 7-17 remaining in the first quarter as Blue Jays score on their first possession of the game. Mordecai to do the kicking for you. As he gets one end-over-end kick and it's going to go out of bounds about the 42-yard line. 37. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> 37. They may make it at the 40, though. And they'll mark five yards off of that. Either way, it's going to be some, some more good starting field position for the Cowboys. It's going to be on the 30 or the 44, 43. Let's call it the 44-yard line. First and 10 for the Cowboys, 7-17. North with a 7 and nothing lead as they will have uh, Johnson in the backfield as he'll take a direct snap. No, taken in there by Cicito as he fumbled the ball. He will be able to get about two yards on the play. Number 35, Brennan Fonestiel, first one in the backfield, able to trip him up a little bit for just a one- or two-yard gain. Well, actually, they're going to give him a two-yard gain yeah. in there. The ball will be just resting off the 45-yard line of the Cowboys. They have a single wing in there. It's a high snap, and it's going to be hit uh, oh, for a loss, and that's going to be... Bevin infield coming off to the right side and just driving into uh, Goodwin. Yeah, number 55, Trevin infield just crashed down right into the running back. One yard loss makes it third and nine now for the Cowboys. 623 remaining in the first quarter. North with a seven and nothing lead. They will put Kerr to the near side. Hauser right over him. And a pass. And it's going to be in there. A 
tackles and a loss on the play by Will Hour and number 57, Colton Stover, as they go way back there. Cecito took that direct snap. Instead of going forward or even to the sidelines, he goes backwards. Well, it just showed what kind of penetration that Blue Jays defensive front had. There was multiple Blue Jays defeating their blocking assignments and in the backfield. They're going to call that fourth and 25 for the Cowboys. And this is going to be a better wow. kick, a little wobbler. Fair catch called in there by Melvin. As the Blue Jays will take over at the... Blue Jay 42 yard line. Nice Melvin doing an, uh, another good job at receiving that kick. That was a high kick in the air. And it's a wobbly yeah, one. It so really sure was. That would have been a hard one to catch. And I mean, on the run or even Absolutely. thinking about Nerves fielding that. Nervous feel down there for, for Melvin. You see him at the pro level miss, uh, missing those type of kicks. <laughs> First and 10 for the Blue Jays is Bodie Fonestill. He split to the near side. Tyson Melvin to the far side. High formation. Will Lauer and Backman in the backfield. Jones with a long count. Takes it. Hands his counter. Rolls out. Good quick dump in there to Will Lauer. Will Lauer, stiff arms one, falls across the 50. It looked like a gain of seven from that pass completion from Eli Jones to Logan Willar. Really looked like a run play to me. I was like, man, the Cowboys really getting penetration there and going to stop that run. But what a nice fake there by Eli and a nice soft touch to drop that ball into Willauer. 4.52 remaining in the first quarter. North with a 7 and nothing lead. Ball resting at the 49-yard line of the Goodland Cowboys as Melvin splits out to the far side. Bonestill to the near side. Eli comes up underneath center, flicks to his left, takes a snap, gives it to Willar. Willar still on his feet, drives in, gets across the 40, up to the 38-yard line of Colby, or excuse me, Goodland. Yeah, nice job, nice push up front. Stover and Puga over on that right side really getting some nice blocking up front for the run game. First and 10 at the 39-yard line of Goodland. As they are going to stay in that uh, high formation. Is that old saying, if it's not broke, don't, don't fix it. it. That's right. Twins out to the far side. It's going to be given to Backman. Backman will cut back, go to the sidelines. He'll get another first and 10 as he'll get about 13 on the carry. Yeah, just kind of ran into that defender because <laughs> – He's running out of real estate from side to side, but if uh, could have got a block on that defender, Backman would have been gone. He, he really uh, um, saw a nice seam there and hit it hard. First and 10 for the Blue Jays as the ball rests at the 24-yard line of Goodland. 3.45 left here in this first quarter. 7 to nothing is our score with Norton. In uh, Colby, excuse me, Goodland. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking that. The counter move in there is going to be the backman, but they're going to sniff that one out. I'm big number 55, Rhett Arig. Well, give backman a couple yard loss on the play. Lloyd leads Phillipsburg 16 to 0 in the first quarter. Uh, and I believe, is Russell at TMP tonight? I think so. Second and 12 for the Blue Jays. A two-yard loss in there with Tyler Backman. Blue Jays going to put three receivers to the far side. Hauser to the near side. Shotgun formation, and it's going to be a pass up to Hauser, and it's caught and into the end zone as he was double teamed. Yeah, we got our own tight end right down there. Split out there. But Hauser, what a nice leaping catch. Six foot four, 230 pounds. Re- don't look like he's going for a rebound. That's right. Nice that ball out of the air. 24-yard pass completion for a touchdown from Jones to Hauser. Hauser just reached up there, pulled it down. 
nice placement in there by Eli. He he led him nice. Yes, he did. A nice lead really, and really nice play. Drove right into it. Snap. The kick. Yep. And good. As the Northern Blue Jays take a 14 and nothing lead with 242 remaining in the first quarter. You listen to KQ and K 106.7 AM and FM North. Does your insurance company seem a little robotic? Here at Insurance Corporation, we experience pride in producing plans suitable for 87.023% of the entire population. When it comes to protecting your future, no one can replace a human. At Farm Bureau Financial Services, we sit down with you for a super check and together create a plan that's right for you. It's your future. Let's protect it. Call me, Joy Johnson, your Farm Bureau agent in Norton. Rev up your engine and hit the road with confidence. Norton Auto Supply, your CarQuest dealer, is your one-stop shop for all your automotive needs. Whether you're a seasoned mechanic or DIY enthusiast, we've got you covered. From quality replacement parts to essential tools and accessories, Norton Auto Supply has it all for you. The friendly and knowledgeable staff is there to help you find the right parts for your vehicle. Visit your local CarQuest dealer, Norton Auto Supply, today and experience the difference. Norton Auto Supply, keeping you on the road one part at a time. Welcome back, Eli Jones to Roman Hauser for a 24-yard touchdown pass with 2.42 remaining here in this first quarter as we get an end over end kick. It's be taken by the Goodland Cowboys, and it's Melvin trying to take that ball away. And Bodie Faunasteel cleaning them up. Nice job in there by Bodie Faunasteel to make that tackle. Number 20 come up with the ball, tracks and Ragland, but they say he was down, and it was, I believe, 22. Michael Johnson that with that uh, kickoff return, as Tyce Melvin was right there. He was. Yeah, it was probably their worst starting field position of the night, and that's on the thir- little over the past the 30. They're going to put Kerr out to the near side here with the receiver in the slot, and we're going to have penalty going to be offsides on the Blue Jays. Mm. When I talked to Coach Melvin today or yesterday, he was telling me that most of the direct staff will go to the running backs because they don't really have a quarterback. But when they want to pass, it's going to come in as a quarterback will be number 10, Zach Thorson. And that's who's the quarterback at that time. So these are, these again, are going to be Direct snap, Thorson still in there as he looks to his right. Now he's going to run the ball. Now throws up across the way as receiver. Enough for a first and ten. That's going to be number 19, Jared Plain, the tight end. Brought down by number three, Jaden Wiggle for the Blue Jays. First and ten for Goodland as this will be their first First and ten of the da- night. Yeah. They'll put Purvis out to the far side in the slot on the far side of the Sacito. Again, Thorson running for his life, and he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Number seventeen, Robin Hauser, crashing down to make the tackle. Lost the one on the play. Makes it now second and 11 for the Goodland Cowboys. Ball rest at the 44-yard line. He was actually looking to break that outside. And Roman Hauser um, remained, kept contained out there and pushed him in and was able to make the tackle as well. Kerr and Quain to the near side. Sacito and Purvis to the far side. Thorson takes the snap. A little short dump in there. Incomplete pass as the pass was intended for number nine, Jesus Sacito, or is that number eight? Nine. 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 Thorson will go out, so it looks like we'll probably have a running. Well, we'll see here. And up, Thorson's going to stay in as he talks to his coach, gets the play. He brings it in. Nick Carnes comes in. For Rowan Granberry, putting a little bit quicker lineman in there to maybe sneak through the in between the linemen. 
Shotgun formation, twins to the left, twins to the right. Thorson drops back, being pressured. Goes downfield, it's going to be intercepted in there by Tice Melvin as the pass was short. Melvin just jumps up, snatches that out of the air for an interception for the North Blue Jays. Yeah, great field awareness by Melvin. Great coverage as well. The, def- the uh, offensive receiver just kind of slipped a little bit, but Melvin was right there to take advantage. Receiver, the intended receiver was Purvis, number 17. 102 remaining in the first quarter. Norton with a 14 to nothing lead has scored on their two possessions so far today. Let's see if they can make it a third. Blue Jays come up the line of scrimmage in that I formation. Receivers left and right. Will Lauer and Backman in the backfield. It's going to be dropped back, and it's going to go deep, and he's got Tyce Melvin for the catch. Walk-in touchdown for Walk. Tyce Melvin. He catches it, caught it on the 33. Walks right on in. 65-yard pass completion from Eli Jones to Tyce Melvin. As his defender falls down, Melvin, all he had to do was make sure he got underneath it. Brought her in. Well, what a great pass from Eli as well. He had a that was a pretty good distance. He had to put some arm behind that one. Extra point try again in there by Eli Jones. He just finished throwing a 65 yard touchdown pass to Tyson Melvin. Up. Oh. And in so Blue Jays, three possessions, three scores, Blue Jays lead 21 to nothing. Hey there, listeners. Are you tired of squinting at your screens, struggling with blurry vision, or constantly misplacing your glasses? Well, it's time to see clearly again with the help from Cole Family Eye Care of Norton. Their experienced team provides comprehensive eye exams, personalized eyewear consultations, and the latest in contact lens technology. Plus, they accept most insurance plans. Don't let poor vision hold you back. Schedule your appointment today by calling 877-5115. Rediscover the world with clarity at Cole Family Eye Care of Norton. Your vision is their focus. Welcome back to Travis Field at Dick Boyd Stadium as the North Blue Jays go 65 yards in the air for a touchdown. Eli Jones to Tice Melvin. Extra point was good with 49 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Blue Jays lead 21 to nothing. Mordecai doing the kicking duties for the Blue Jays. As he gets a nice wobbler out there, it's going to be taken and fumbled at the 25. It's going to be taken in there by Johnson. And the first contact by a Blue Jay, 77, 77, Trayvon Mordecai, the kicker. Yeah, you always like to see the kicker get down there and make the tackle. Right, Johnson, nice hustle. Johnson with that as he fumbled it on the 25-yard line is able to get uh, eight yards on that return as it's first and ten for the Goodland Cowboys at the 33-yard line of Goodland. 42 seconds remaining here in this first quarter. Blue Jays up 21 to nothing. This time they'll send Trimps out to the far side. Single receiver to the near side. Shotgun formation. Thorson rolls out being chased by a couple Blue Jays, and it's going to be caught by Cecito, and he's going to be brought down as it's going to be uh, – is that Hauser that brought him down? Yeah. Hauser ran him down. That was a deflection. Yeah, there was two receivers right in the same path, and the first receiver missed it and went right into the lap of the yeah. second one. i seen a push in the back that wasn't called over there. The so, 20-yard pass. 20-yard completion in there from Thorson to Sacito, I believe. As they'll put twins to the far side, single receiver to the near side. And we're going to have a flag on the play. Illegal procedure, it looks like, on the Cowboys. Uh, 
That's no indication. The offside. Blue Jays. Oh, Blue Jays. That's the second time. Yeah, I don't know if the tackle or the uh, nose tackle is lining into the neutral zone or what. Five-yard penalty. First and five now for Goodland with five seconds remaining here in this first quarter. See if they get this off. I don't believe they're going to get this off. And after one, Norton leads 21 to nothing. What makes Pioneer Brand List E3 Soybeans different? Pioneer offers proven products and decades worth of expertise to help make growers successful. Clydesdale Agronomy has the expertise and support to help growers successfully adopt this responsible weed control system. Learn more at pioneer.com slash enlist E3 or contact your local Pioneer sales representative, Randy Clydesdale, at 785-871-7745. Go Blue Jays! Everyone has a big to-do list nowadays. With a busy schedule, it's easy to forget about yourself. Don't neglect your dental health. Schedule a quick and easy dental checkup with Dr. Shirt. They're open Monday through Thursdays, 8.30 to 5. Call and set up an appointment today at 785-877-2821 or stop in at 205 South Kansas in Norton. Dr. Shirk and his staff are ready to get your smile looking its best. Welcome back to Dick Boyd Stadium as the North Blue Jays go, is 21, Goodland 0, into the first quarter. Blue Jays have scored on all three of their possessions. possessions. Goodland moving the ball. This is their best building. Well, not their best building, but so as, as deep as they've been, I sure. believe, in, in Blue Jay territory. As moving the ball. Right. Yes. Not as a kickoff or a, a bad kickoff. Uh, some of that has to do with the uh, Blue Jay penalty. First and five now for Goodland, and the ball rests off the 40-yard line of Norton. The force and drops back, being chased in there. He gets the ball off, and it's going to be completed in there by Kerr. Kerr sidestep two or three Blue Jays, and he does it again, and he gets tackled. They're going to call it a horse collar. Nice there. Melvin over there. Finally bring him down. They'll call a horse collar on that. To be, what, half the distance to the goal? Yeah, so, I mean, guys, look what we're, we did. A, it's like a... 39-yard pass completion in there to Kerr. And, you know, in the pregame, we talked about Lincoln Kerr hard to bring down. Yes, he was. Several Blue Jays attempting to bring him down. Finally, little Tice Melvin over there kind of put a wall up on him at the end. They say Kerr is 6'6", six, six, Melvin is 5'6". Right. <laughs> and right. He, There's he probably gets... a 75-pound weight difference there as well. Yeah. Blue Jays is going to make them earn this. First and goal for Goodland. As it's going to be direct snapped in there to Johnson. As he will get to the line of scrimmage. Colton Stover with his hands around his waist, bringing him backwards for little to no gain there. Nice penetration there by Colton Stover. Second and goal for Goodland. As they put everything tied in there, they do have a man in the slot. And it's going to be Sacito, I believe, with that direct snap. Blue Jays defense, defensive line, making them earn that really tough. Led down there by number 69 for the Blue Jays, Brody Mullins. Also a couple of linebackers in there as well, Eli Jones. One-yard gain. Now it's going to be third and goal on the one. 10:33 left here in this first half in order to 20 to nothing lead. Another direct snapped in there to Cecito. Cecito works trying to work, and they're going to say that he got in for the touchdown. Nice, tough running down there from the Cowboys. As Cecito gets a one-yard run with 10:22 left in the first half. 
Looks like they may be going for two here. I see a maybe a toss up to number three, Kerr. They're going to put Kerr at the tight end of the near side here. Mm -hmm. I see him coming out here. Got to be careful. And it's going to be, nope, it's going to be given to Sestito in coming. Right at him was going to be Trevin Infield. None blocked. Yeah, Trevin Infield come flying through there like he was shot out of a cannon. So no good on the extra point. Norton leads 21-6. to You're listening to KQNK. 106.7 AM and FM North. Champions know that success starts with hard work and support from the right team. My friends at Next Tech are proud to be a part of that team. Whether you need technology at home, at work, or in the field. From reliable fiber internet and TV now for your home to time-saving IT and security solutions for your business, Next Tech is ready to help you win. Visit next-tech.com today to learn how to make Next Tech part of your championship team. Oh, oh the headlights. Welcome back to Dick Boyd Stadium. A one-yard run in there by Jesus Tacito for the touchdown. Goodland on the board. Extra point, no good as the Blue Jays lead 21-6. to At the touchdown was aided by a 30, 34-yard Pass play to Lincoln Kerr. Back for the Blue Jays will be Tice Melvin and Tyler Backman doing the kicking duties. Looks like number 21 for Goodland. That's going to be uh, Jeffe Ballesteros. Okay. Easy for you to say. Jeffe Ballesteros. As we're set, 10 22, drag kick in there, take it in there. I believe that Bonnetsville? 35. Yep. Brennan Bonnetsville picked that up, got him about 10 yards. Pretty good field position for the Blue Jays. Brennan Bonnetsville, the up man there, kind of a squib kick right down the middle. I think that was by design. Went pretty quick, though. Yeah, it did. First and 10 for the Blue Jays. Ball will rest on the 37-yard line of Norton as they come out of the huddle with Tyce Melvin going out to the far side. Brody Fonestill to the near side. Will Lauer and Backman in the backfield, and underneath center is Eli Jones. Eli cans it off to Backman. Backman cuts back to his left. Spin still on his feet as he'll get a first and 10 and 12 yards. Flag on the play as we're going to probably have an unsportsmanlike on, on the Blue Jays. As I believe it was something vulgar was mm. mentioned. Yeah, there. that kind of negates a really nice hard run in there by Backman. Nice spin move there at the end as well. So tack it on from the end of that play. I'm not for sure. I, there's nobody laying on the ground or anything, so I'm pretty sure it was right. it was verbal. Yeah, it was verbal because he threw that flag. He was standing right there by the players, too. Yeah. Not, not a very heads-up um, thing to do by the Blue Jays. Yeah, and the gates a 12-yard run in there by Tyler Backman. Now, it's going to be first and 10, but the, but the ball now will be, be first and 14. It, no, they're uh, changing. Oh, no, they're changing it. They're just kind of readjusting it. Oh, <laughs> Ten minutes remaining in the first half. Norton leads 21-6. to six. As they'll put Hauser in the slot. Melvin on the near side. Far side will be Fonestill. Bodie Fonestill. And it's going to be a counter move in there to Backman. Yeah, and there was penetration right away. Uh, Eli just able to get that off to Backman. 
Eli does a nice job hiding that ball. Actually, that lineman was kind of going around. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just just missed it there. Got a score update here from uh, Phillsburg. Boyd's leading Phillsburg in the second, 24 to 8. Here's 21 to 6. Non district play. Second and eight for the Blue Jays as they put trips to the near side. Single receiver to the far side. Shotgun formation. Eli Jones flanks his right by Backman. The quick screen out there to Melvin. Melvin trying to dance around and he'll go down. Just nowhere to go for Melvin. Nice catch, but no gain from the play. Coach Melvin telling Tice Melvin, I want you to go up. Upfield, up right? Upfield, because we no. we need eight yards. Yeah, could have got two or three um, yards probably there if he would went upfield and, and fell forward. So it would have made it third and five instead of third and nine. Loss of one on the play. Eight thirty left in the first half. Blue Jays send trips to the far side. Receiver to the near side is going to be Hauser. Shotgun formation for the Blue Jays. Eli rolls out to his right. Looks downfield. And it's caught, he's over, caught there. over there, but I don't know if he has enough on. It's going to be really close. Kind of the spot of the field where if it's fourth and inches, you, they might be thinking about going for it here. I think they made it as they straighten out that flag. We've had kickoff spotted yeah. <laughs> at this distance in the field. They're going to have an official's timeout here. They're going to take it for a measurement. It's right at the really, really close. And, of course, we're clear across the field, so it's hard to tell. But it looked like to me, it's if it's not, yeah, they within about two inches from there. Yeah, they stretched one out to, the, one to two inches. Yeah, yeah. About as close as you can get without getting it. Should be fourth and inches for the Blue Jays as that ball will be placed about the 44 and three quarters. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like Coach is going to go go oh. for it here. Well, it's a, man, it is right on the 44. Fourth down on the 44. Yeah. And a fourth of an inch to go. Right. Um, I see maybe a hard count here, but Eli Jones so good at finding a space in between the guard and the center. And if he falls through. forward, I mean, yes. gosh, you're, you're going to be set pretty, pretty nice as they tighten it up there. They put a tight end in there. They oh, oh, Blue Jays jump. Yeah, that's one thing we couldn't have. Going to bring on the punt team. Yep. Mm. First punt. First punt of the evening for the Blue Jays. Is they'll mark it five yards back. Now make it a fourth and five and five sixteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just a bad time for the Blue Jays to add another penalty to their growing list. Kerr back for the Cowboys. Is this where we will see some fancy running and a full head of steam? Let's see if they kick it to him. The snap, the kick, and it's a high kick. Blue Jays trying to get down there, and the Kerr is going to take it. And he sidesteps one. Jaden Wagle, first one down there, got sidestepped but was coming back. They've been having some little bit of footing issues over there, uh, some of those Cowboys have. Well, I've seen uh, Bill Johnson coming in with some more cleats, too, so I'm thinking that the Blue Jays are having some slippage problems also. First and ten for the Cowboys at the Cowboy 28-yard line. 8:04 remaining here in this first half. Nord with a 21 to six lead. They scored on their first three possessions. Goodland has gone to a spread offense. Wins to the left, wins to the right. Now trips to the right side, and it's a bad snap, but it's a screen taken in there by Cecito, and he slips and. Maybe a loss of two on that play. Yeah, just kind of a rough play overall for the Cowboys. Nothing really seemed to go too well on that series. Loss of two makes it now second and 12 for Goodland. 742 remaining. It was a bad snap, too. He actually reached out and was able to to get it, but it was uh, 
I mean, he immediately threw it as soon as he got that in his hand. You got to give it up to the Blue Jays' defense. They were right there in coverage. Trips to the far side, Kerr to the near side. He'll be guarded in there by Eli Jones as they look for Jones. Or and Kerr will come down with it. Then he can't hold on to it. But there's going to be flag on the play as there's going to be a holding call onto the right side of Goodland. Yeah, Blue Jays uh, had some great penetration by that defensive front in the face of the quarterback, and they had to kind of hold to keep keep them Blue Jays from getting a sack. That'll make it uh, second and 17 now for the Cowboys. As they have been splitting out the defense, as they put twins and trips on either side. And all that is doing is spreading out the offensive line. So linebackers are rushing and the defensive ends are also crashing down on the quarterback, forcing them to hurry that ball up. Thorson takes it, goes across the middle, and it's almost oh, intercepted almost. by Weigel as intended receiver. It was number 19, Quain. Actually, I think that went right through his hands. Yeah, I think so, too. Waggle kind of holding back, playing center field there for the Blue Jays, trying to keep everything in front of him. Just a step off from that uh, interception. I bet he wish he had that one back. I think it's third and 22. I don't know where I got the 17. Yeah, Eli's kind of been shadowing number three for um, Kerr for the Cowboys. See if that continues here. They put Twins to the far side, Twins to the near side, and Eli in the slot trying to get Kerr as it's going to be Thorson. Thorson gets out of two tackles and an interception in there by Weigel as he cuts back to his right, goes up up the middle, gets hit, goes and falls forward across the five. I told you, I bet he wished he had that one back. Weigel with the second opportunity makes good on the second opportunity. What a nice play in there by Jayton Weigel come up with that interception and to find the hole yes he did he nice run back as well kind of went from safety to running, running back. back that's right 657 left blue jays with first and goal on the five yard line of goodland as they'll put uh, hauser in the slot melvin the wide receiver bodie fauna still here to the near side and it's going to be given to Backman. Backman's going to be in, in well, for the yeah, touchdown. Give him the touchdown. Five yard run at the 650 mark for Tyler Backman. Backman was hit just lightly and kind of momentum shifted yeah. towards the hole. Kind of able to fall forward and break that goal line was Backman. The Blue Jays scoring a five yard run, aided by a Interception by Jayton Weigel. Extra point try in there by Eli Jones. The holder, Tice Melvin. The snap in there by number 55, Seven Into. And it's good as the North Blue Jays go up 28 to 6 with 6 minutes remaining in the first half. Precision under pressure. That's what area students and athletes strive for every day. And Natoma Manufacturing Corporation strives to produce the highest quality products along with great communication in their drive to achieve their goals. Natoma Manufacturing Corporation wishes the best for all of the area students and athletes this school year and wherever they are going in life. Good luck and have fun out there from Natoma Manufacturing Corporation located on East Highway 36 in Norton. Welcome back to Dick Boyd Stadium. A five-yard run in there by the running back, Tyler Backman. To get to the first and goal situation, it was a run back, an interception by Jayton Weigel to put the Blue Jays in scoring position. Big 50 remaining here in the first half. Beloy continues to pile it on to Phillipsburg, uh, up 32-8 to eight in the second quarter. Yeah, Jayton Wagle 
um, missed that first INT, you know he really wanted to redeem himself. I'm so happy for him down there, able to pick that second one off. And then he, like you said, he ran um, with authority down there, bringing that interception back to the five-yard line. He's Look. kind of been our um, special teams extraordinaire as well. Always the one of the first ones down there on coverage. Mordecai did the kick and duty. Duty. That's it. Right in the middle. It's going to be fielded in there by the up man. I can't see who it is. Mordecai's in there, though. Yeah, he is. Just Kicker. kind of found a dead spot in the middle of the field and dropped it in there. Just a bevy of Blue Jays around the ball. One of those coming out for the Blue Jays was number 33, Jarrett Bonnesteel. First and 10 for the Cowboys as the ball will be laid at the 39 yard. Or where did they have it? I can't see the ball. Oh, there it is. It's on the 40 yard line of Goodland. Yeah. Right on, right on the white. On the far hatch. Is up with a receiver to the far side. Kerr will be the tight end. Single wing, and it's going to be a fake reverse in there by Sacito. Sacito miss, hits, gets hit, but finally knocked out of bounds not, yeah. by number 21, Bodie Fonestiel for the Blue Jays. He got tapped there a little bit, but they're getting that as an arm tackle, so. Not hard to break this arm tackle. Sacito's so got some pretty good speed in there. Yeah, he has some skills, some speed, and, and some moves down there. But Blue Jays defense, like I said, doing a really good job of penetration. So um, rarely breaks through that defensive front. Second and four now for Goodland. 634 left in this first half. North with a 28-6 to six lead. And that single back, Sacito, cutting back and forth, has a first and 10. He gets across the 50 up to the 45. He got tripped up by number 32, Fauna Steel for the Blue Jays. First and 10, a nine-yard run in there by Sacito. Logan Fauna Steel on the tackle as he took that direct snap. I suppose we're going to see a little bit of motion now by them wingman uh, coming back to find taking those uh, snaps. Johnson back in there as quarterback. There's not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Didn't look like it. No, the right man. side was off. Sacito got hit behind the line of scrimmage by a couple Blue Jays, but sidesteps and keeps going forward, keeps his feet moving. Looks like a gain of about three on the play. He did. Yeah, a couple Blue Jays. Trevin Enfield was one of them. Went shooting back in there. Just couldn't quite keep the, the grip on him, but he had him in the backfield. Second and seven for the Cowboys, 535 in the Blue Jay territory at the 42. Let's see if they put enough guys on the line. The left side is way it's back. It's usually, yeah. Way yeah, up. look how far back they are. Or else one's off size. There's a reverse in there, and it's going to be number 69. Mullen. Yeah, yeah Mullen finally. He had him by the shirt tail, just absolutely would not let him go. Uh, number one, is that who that was, the carrier? No, number nine. Number nine? Oh, Cicito. Wow. Going to lose three on the play. Like I said, oh, Mullen. They lost more than that. Ed. They oh, lost five. five. Oh, five. Yeah. yeah. Mullen just uh, phenomenal job penetrating and catching that running back. Just absolutely would not let him go. Third and 12 now for Goodland as the ball is on the 47-yard line of North. Curves it here at the slot, and it's going to be a direct snap in there. And I don't know who got it, but he had a pretty nice Point head two. of steam. Yeah, Johnson. He did. Yeah. Hauser and, and Fauna Steel, Logan Fauna Steel in there on the tackle for the Blue Jays. Tried running over Fauna Steel, uh, but couldn't quite get it done. It'll be fourth and eight now for the Cowboys with 416 remaining here in this first half with a 28 to 6 lead for Norton. As they put number 17, uh, L.J. Purvis to the near side. Kerr to the far side. Let's watch him get up to the sticks, and they're going to throw it right up to him. And they do that. It's going to be short, 
And it's going to be incomplete pass. They're going to call pass interference on the Blue Jays. As, as e, or Eli Jones was trying to catch up to him, and the ball was cut short, or was a short pass, he kind of got the push in there on Kerr. Yeah, I couldn't tell whether that was going to be out of bounds anyway. Well, you see how his feet lay, and he just dropped his body back right. through just in case that he could reach and keep his both feet in inbounds. But it was an incomplete pass, but then it was aided also by uh, pass interference by the Blue Jays. That'll give them, another, give them a first and ten. Going to be 3.49 left to go here in the first half. Blue Jays lead 28-6. Cowboys driving down the field, aided by a pass interference penalty there. As they'll have that direct snap in there to Johnson, I believe that is. Nope. And again, it's the Cito. Eight. Nope, nope, number eight. <laughs> Good one. Good one. Eli Jones and Logan Willauer shooting in there for the Blue Jays, able to trip him up. As it's going to be a second and seven situation now for Goodland. Or a fumble, a bad snap in there by Goodland. As the running back will pick it up, he'll get two yards on the play. Yeah, crushed in there by number 17, Roman Hauser. Jack Carter in. That's kind of the first time that we're yeah. going to see Jack out I've there. Seen it. That's the first time I've even seen him suited up. Yeah. Very nice. Love to see Jack Carter out there on the field. It's going to be third and five for Goodland with 240 remaining here in this uh, first half. North with a 28-6 to six lead. Goodland. Gets that pass as he was being pursued in there. Was that infield pursuing him at the time? But it's incomplete pass. That wouldn't have been past the markers anyway. And bring up fourth down. Blue Jays been pretty stingy. See if that can can continue. Fourth and five now for Goodland. 229 left in the first half. 28 to 6 lead for the Norton Blue Jays. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout. It'll be timeout. Goodland. So we'll take a quick 30 second timeout. Norton Blue Jays 28. Goodland Cowboys 6. When life happens, Boxler Insurance will be there to help you get through it. This is David Davis from Boxler Insurance Agency. Be prepared for life's unexpected events with one of our many just-in-case insurance options. We not only assess your insurance needs and get you the policies that best meet those needs, we will also be there if you ever need to use those policies by assisting with submitting claims. Start to finish, we're there for you. Contact us at 785-877-5128 or stop by our office located at 108 North 1st in Norton. Welcome back to Dick Boyd Stadium, Travis Field. 229 left in the first half. North with a 28 to 6 lead. Goodland faced with a fourth and five situation as they call a timeout to see what their next step is as the ball rests on the Blue Jay 23 yard line. Blue Jay defense has been really stingy here. A couple penalties have got them some of the yardage that. That uh, has got them into this area. I don't think they see us. I don't here. think so either. As Richardson and Cecito, or Richardson and Goodwin in the backfield, single wing for the receiver in the slot. And it's going to be a drop back pass in there. And it's going to be intended receiver with Kerr as. Roman Hauser was coming in rather quick. Yeah, going to be turnover on downs from, from the Cowboys. Nice defensive coverage in there by the Blue Jays. Not only do they have the pressure, but they had the coverage on the back end as well. 
First and 10 for the Blue Jays at the Blue Jay 23-yard line. 2.22 left here in the uh, first half as Norton leads 28-6. to six. Probably a heavy dose of running here. Yeah, but it, it shows, you know, Blue Jays can score quick. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them maybe a couple of running plays, eat up a little bit of the clock, and then maybe take a shot downfield. Get the ball back to pass. Looks like uh, Bodie Fon still to the receiver to the near side. In the slot will be Tyler Backman. Shotgun formation for the Blue Jays. Fumble on the snap, and it's going to be Jones still on his feet, but he's going to have a loss on the play. Yeah, both teams having a little bit of center to quarterback issue tonight. A loss of two on the play now makes it second and 12. Now they'll probably go for downfield just to make up that yardage there. Looks like the same formation is going to be Backman in the slot and Fonestil to the near side. Hazard to the far side with Ty Smelvin in the slot. Shotgun formation. Willauer flanked by or Eli Jones flanked by Willauer. It goes over the middle and overthrows Willauer. Yeah, just he must have thought that he had uh, Hauser over there because it was just about a foot too high, probably about right for Roman, but just a little too tall for Will Hour. Well, funny thing about that is that he didn't put anything on it, right? And uh, normally, when he throws a little short pass like that, it's going in like a rocket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe he threw it like a rocket; it might have worked out. Trip to the near side for the Blue Jays. Third and 12, 135 left here in the first half. Has Goodland scrambling on defense. And Jones looking to his left, being pressured, and he's going to be brought down for a lot. All right. And we're going to have be a pun in here about the Blue Jays. Yeah, it's like. Oh, timeout Goodland. Is they're probably going to talk it over, uh, talk it over about uh, maybe rushing the punter. All right. At this time, we want to um, thank our Blue Jay 2023-2024 Sportscaster sponsors. Those sponsors include fit to go United Northwest Federal Credit Union, Angle Sales and Service, Cowpoke Supply, Iron Insurance, Norton County Hospital, New Age Industrial, Royal Sales and Service, Moffitt Drug, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Norton Auto Supply, Cole Family Eye Care, Clydesdale Agronomy, Dr. Shirk, Next Tech, Natoma Manufacturing, Boxler Insurance, Jamboree, Norton Sports Center, Dr. Kreisig, Sanders Furniture, Mason Miller, Sonic, Sanders Construction, and First State Bank. I want to thank these sponsors when you get the chance. Uh, you go in to see these these folks. Make sure you tell them thank you uh, for bringing you Blue Jay Sports. Blue Jays will kick the ball as they are faced with a fourth to twenty situation. Lincoln Kerr back for the Cowboys. The line drive kick in there is going to push Kerr back a little bit as he takes it at the forty four. Tries to sidestep a couple Blue Jays. Bringing him down will be number 75 for the Blue Jays. It's going to be Cope Relsback. Yeah. Cope Relsback was the practice player of the week here. Uh, so nice to see Cope in there with the tackle. Yeah, it really was. Uh, you know, <laughs> Cope stood his ground. He wasn't letting him go anywhere. Uh, Kerr kind of lowered his shoulder and gave him the business, but Railsback a- able to uh, handle that tackle. Well, of course, Railsback's probably about six one. Yeah, yeah, he's he's not a small pounds. kid. He held he held his ground very well. First and ten for the Goodland Cowboys at the Norton forty three yard line, as they will put receivers to the left and receivers to the right. Thorson in for the quarterbacking duties as he throws it in there to. Uh, That's fumble on the play. Yeah, it looked like looks like Brennan Bonestill with the yeah, tough tackle. Man. He did. Well, Brennan hit him hard um, while he was bringing him to the ground. Ball popped loose. Second and eight now for Goodland, and they're going to down the ball. Yeah, I don't know how many fifty seconds left. Kind of early to start killing the ball on second down. 
Huh. I didn't know. I didn't know if they had enough men on the field. Maybe are they out of timeouts? No, they got no, they two. got two left. Why they would kill the kill the ball instead of taking the timeouts? Beyond me. Yeah, I don't. And they're in Blue Jay territory. You know, I wouldn't. Have, I would have took the timeout. Wayne comes out to the near side, trips to the far side. Thorson looks to his right, looking for, oh, that's Kerr. Oh, in and out of the hands of Tice Belvin. His Kerr was backing him up. Yeah, double coverage there by Tice Melvin and Eli jo- Jones on. Good job by the Blue Jays. In coverage, yeah. That's Eli was running right beside him, and that's Tice a, was playing center field. Yeah, that's a rare miss by Tice too. He usually brings those in. They bring up fourth and eight now instead of third and eight. Doesn't have that Eli were, Jones touch on it. That's why. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, once you get used to the way someone passes the ball, there's a lot of truth to that. Fourth and eight for Goodland. As Thorson will take the snap, looks to his left. Now being pressured by a couple Blue Jays, dumps it off, has a receiver, and that's going to be Goodwin. Or is that Cecito? That's Cecito. And they have a first and 10 at the 25 yard line. 35 seconds remaining here in this first half. Thorson again will down the ball. Man, why don't you? You got them, use them. Time right. out. Yep. Of course, well, like that down, I think, it get, does it give you 45 seconds of timeouts only? A, maybe a 30 second? That could be. Maybe that's the reasoning. Could be, but you lose it down also. True. Trip to the uh, near side for the Cowboys. Kerr lines up to the far side as they kind of have that zone over there on Kerr. As he looks for Kerr, and he has to go to the opposite side. Completion in there by Goodland Cowboys. And that's going to be number 19 for the Cowboys. It's going to be Jared Wayne. Thrown out of bounds by number one, Tice Melvin. That will stop the clock also. Plenty of time here for the Cowboys on the 10-yard line. They'll start the clock now. Is the 20 seconds left here as they get into formation. There's a penalty as it's number 19, Wayne, takes off too soon. That'll push him back and eat a little time off the clock. Five-yard penalty, first and 15 now for the Cowboys. Blue Jays going to have to tighten up here a little bit. Goodland Start decides to give up a few yards. Goodland decides they want that timeout after all, so we're going to go ahead and send it for a quick 30-second timeout. You've been listening to KQNK, 106.7 AM and FM, Norton. Stock up and save at your Jamboree on sale this week. Boston Butt Pork Roast, $1.78 a pound. KC Strip Steak, $9.98 a pound. Five-pound bag red or gold best choice potatoes, $2.98 each. New crop honey crisp apples, $1.98 a pound. Select varieties Frito-Lay Doritos, $3.98 each. And select varieties best choice ice cream, just $2.98 each. Enjoy these savings and more this week at your Jamboree Foods with locations in Norton and and Hill City. Welcome back to Dick Boyd Stadium. 15 seconds remaining in this first half. Norton with a 28 to 6 lead. Goodland in Blue Jay territory as they've been chipping away by these short passes. But a penalty will bring them back to the first and 15. The ball will be resting at the 15 yard line of the Blue Jays as Goodland stays in the shotgun formation. They put twins to the near side, twin to the far side. Thorson looks his left, looking for Curry. He's going to be running dead, and he's going to be wrapped up in there by number 55, Trevin Infield. Trevin Infield kind of been wreaking havoc all night down there from the inside. Bumble on the play, and they're going to call it an incomplete pass as he... Blue Jay down. Number 17, Roman Hauser went flying in there. Kind of got the, looked like he got the wind knocked out of him. And that'll be the end of the first half as the North Blue Jays hold the Goodland Cowboys in their territory. 
and they go into the locker room with a 28-6 to lead. We're going to take a timeout, come back. We're going to talk about that first half. The power of the bear, the stealth of a cougar, and the endurance and strength of a Mustang. That's what you'll find in the ATVs and UTVs at Norton Sports Center. At Norton Sports Center, you can find just what you need, and they know how to care for them when you need service. Give your hunting an edge this year when you know you can trust the ATV or UTV that will get you where you want to go. Find your advantage at Norton Sports Center located on West Highway 36 in Norton, or give them a call at 785-877-5452. Encourage to inspire with courage, spirit, or hope. To give help or patronage to someone. The Center Sky Dentistry Clinic and Dr. Craig Kreisig knows that the Norton community gives their support, encouragement, and fantastic patronage to them and to all the area students and athletes. Center Sky Dentistry is proud to call the Norton community home for over 35 years. And they're looking forward to serving you in the future. Transform your home into a haven of comfort and style. Step into Sander Furniture of Norton and discover the perfect dining room set that make every meal a special occasion. Create living rooms of your dreams with the wide selection of sofas, coffee tables, and entertainment centers. And for the perfect night's sleep, explore their bedroom collections featuring cozy mattresses, beautiful bed frames, and storage solutions to keep your space clutter-free. Visit Sander Furniture today on the corner of Highway 283 and Armory Drive and experience the difference. Sander Furniture, bringing nice things to you. Are you drowning in a sea of numbers and paperwork? It's time to take control of your finances with the help of the experts at Mapes and Miller LLP. Their team of experienced CPAs and tax professionals are here to guide you through the mazes of taxes, investments, and financial planning. Whether you're an individual seeking personal tax solutions or a business owner aiming for financial growth, they've got you covered. Trust in their precision, dedication, and commitment to your financial well-being at Mapes and Miller LLP, located on East Highway 36 in Norton. As you crave a taste explosion that'll make your taste buds dance, Sonic of Norton should be your ultimate destination for flavor-packed fun. Picture this, sizzling burgers, crispy tots, and mouth-watering shakes all served up with a side of retro charm. And don't forget their famous happy hours from 2 to 4 p.m. where you enjoy half-price drinks and slushes. Don't wait. Rev up your taste buds and head to Sonic today, where every bite's an adventure and every sip is a celebration of flavor. Hail no. Here's some damage. There's some damage. Everywhere you see some hail damage. If this is the case after the recent storms, it's time to give me a call. I'm John Sanders of Sanders Construction Incorporated, and I have 10 years' experience in repairing the damage that Mother Nature brings with wind and hail storms. Whether you have damage to a shingle or metal roof, siding or seamless gutters, Sanders can fix, repair, and replace Mother Nature's worst. I'm licensed and insured, so don't stress about the mess. Give Sanders a call. 785-202-0315. Again, that's 785 202 At First Aid Bank, they pride themselves on offering a wide range of services tailored to meet your needs. Need a loan for a new car? They got you covered with competitive rates. Want a savings account for a child's future? First Aid Bank will make that easy for you. First Aid Bank has a commitment to their customers and believe in building long-lasting relationships. They promise to take the time to understand your financial goals. Experience the difference of banking with a trusted friend. First State Bank, with locations in Norton, Plainville, Hill City, and Hawk. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Dick Boyd Stadium as the North Blue Jays take a halftime lead at 28-6. to This is how the scoring win. A four-yard run by Eli Jones. The extra point was good, making our score 7 and nothing at the 7-17 mark in the first. A 25-yard pass to, from Eli Jones to Roman Hauser. Again, the extra point was good, making our score 14 to nothing, 242 in the first. Then it's a 65-yard pass from Eli Jones to Tice Melvin. The extra point was good, making our score 21 to nothing with 49 seconds in the left in the first. One-yard run by Jesus Sacido. A two-point conversion was no good. Our score 21 to six with 1022 in the second. Then it's a five-yard run by Tyler Backman after an interception aided by Jason Weigel. The extra point was good. Our score at halftime, 28-6 to six in the second quarter here. Or halftime, I'm sorry. Stats goes a little bit like this. Eli in the passing, he's 5 for 7 for 107 yards and two touchdowns for 107 total yards in the passing. In the rushing, it's going to be Tyler Backman, seven carries for 42 yards and one touchdown. 
Eli Jones, five carries for 32 and one touchdown. Logan Willauer has two carries with 19 yards. Total of uh, 90, 93 yards of rushing in that first half. In the receiving, it's Tyce Melvin, two catches for 64 yards and a touchdown. Roman Hauser, one catch for 25 and one touch, touchdown. Uh, Bodie Bonsa, one catch for 10 yards. And Logan Willar, one catch for eight yards for that 107 total yards. Their total yardage for the first half for the North Blue Jays is 200 yards, 107 and for passing and 93 for rushing. It's number of rushing plays, 14. Number of passes, seven. A total of 21 plays in there for 200 yards for the Blue Jays. For the Goodland Cowboys, it's going to be Zach Thorson. He was in the passing. He's 6 of 12 for 100 yards. Uh, Chayton Goodwin is 0 and 4 in the passing. Jesus Facito 1 for 1 for negative 2. Uh, 17 total yards, in, or 98 yards, excuse me, for uh, passing for Goodland. In the running game is Chayton Goodwin, 10 rushes for 8 yards and 1 touchdown. It's going to be Zach Thorson, 5 carries for negative 6. Mike. Johnson, four carries for six yards, and Jesus Sacito, one carry for a negative five uh, for a total of three yards for the Goodland Cowboys. In the receiving, it's going to be Jared Quain, three catches for 25 yards, Jesus Sacito, two catches for 37, Lincoln Kerr, one catch for 38, uh, Chayton Goodwin, one for negative two yards, LJ Purvis, uh, and Michael Johnson have been targeted a couple times here for a total of uh, 98 yards. Total yardage for the uh, Goodland Cowboys, 101 yards. They have one touchdown and two interceptions. They have 20 running plays uh, and 17 pass plays, a total of 37 plays for the Goodland Cowboys. So our score is 28-6 to six here for the uh, Halftime score here against the Goodland Cowboys. I don't know. Are we playing good? Because we, I mean, we have we scored a first three, kind of got a little uh, lax a little bit. Goodland, well, Goodland's not really been playing all that great, but I mean, it's a. Well, we kind of talked about it at the start of the game. We want, really want to see the Blue Jays come out fast in, in the first quarter. And I felt like they did that. I felt like they came out to play. They were pumped up. Adrenaline was going. Um, I really like they start off the game with a passing, you know, passing attack. That really opened up the run game. I think Goodwin was expecting us to have a passing game, which we did. And uh, the Blue Jays just played, I thought, uh, phenomenal. We are susceptible to a big play from time to time. And, th- and that did happen the first half. But other than that, um, once again, I feel like the Blue Jays' defense playing lights out here um, as well. Um, every About every week, Blue Jays been tough to score on, and they're proving that again tonight. You know, as you talk about the, the defense, I've noticed that although they have running backs by committee, is that they look rather confused. Because yeah. there's a Blue Jay stepping in between the lines in there, or, you know, in between – that they're defenders in, or their offensive line. Yeah, and the Blue, Blue Jays playing extremely well, but I, it, it almost had the perception to me on the first half that Goodland came in taking Blue Jays kind of lightly. Blue Jays, you know, like I said, homecoming, pumped up, ready to play, uh, and I just feel like maybe the Goodland uh, Cowboys might have uh, took that for granted a little bit. Right, you know, and, and they, you mentioned the most susceptible to a big play, and one of the things about that is is that um, I think they were going to rely on Lincoln Kerr a lot. You right. know, he's a D1 prospect as a junior. Uh, he's hard to bring down. Uh, I don't really see him in a lot of the mix. The last, the second quarter, yes, because they were mm-hmm. in behind. They were 20 points behind, so they put them in the in the mix. But is that a second half weapon for him or what? Yeah, more, uh, first half he almost seemed like more of a decoy than anything. But uh, a lot of that also, um, you have to give up the Blue Jays' defense. They were putting pressure uh, on the quarterback, especially that first quarter. Second quarter, they were able to um, get some some openings there. But that Blue Jays' um, defensive pressure was pretty uh, pretty good in the first half overall. Again, our score, 28-6, to six, five minutes to the second half kickoff. Uh, Blue Jays with uh, 
pretty much an even. Well, passing, they have more passing than rushing, but um, nothing really has stuck out to me. I mean, they were pretty balanced. Yeah, balanced. Um, we've had we had we've had some penalties. They've had some penalties. We, they've had some issues uh, slipping on the field. But like I said, um, every player has to play on the same field, so um, you can't really take that into consideration. Um, like I said, some penalties on from both sides. Um, but overall, I just think, like I said, Blue Jays came out to me uh, more ready to play than the Cowboys. And I and I know it's a long trip over here, and I know um, you know it's not a you know a league game or anything like that, but. Um, Blue Jays taking it pretty serious down here tonight. Um, I f- felt like, uh, you know, several players have had a good game. Um, I thought Melvin uh, Waggle with that interception. I know he's kind of probably mad that he didn't get the first one, but ended up getting that second one. Um, you know, Jones uh, been playing pretty good. Um, seen some nice runs out of Backman and, and, um, and, and those. So uh, just overall team ever down here. Like I said, I, I got a shout out to, to the offensive defensive lines. Um, I think both sides are playing extremely well. And then the coaching staff um, calling some really uh, good plays tonight, I felt like, uh, and had the, um, the Blue Jay players ready to go. You know, we can go back to Jaden Weigel first couple games. He had, he's had, he had three interceptions. Yeah. And it's yeah. been a little while since he's got them. Now, yeah. I'll tell you what, he, in all five of these games, he's touched the ball right up close. Yeah. Yeah. But today, he finally wrangled one in, and he got some return yardage on it. So, uh, good play in there by Jade. And he plays a lot of the center field in there. He may not he get the most tackles or anything, but I'll tell you what, you come across the middle and you're tipping that ball or you're bumbling it, Jade's yeah. going to be right there. Pretty stealthy back there. Mm-hmm. Kind of like I said, um, a lot of times you can miss him, especially if you're looking over the line. He's not, you know, he, he hasn't um, finished his growth spurt yet. But I tell you what, awful stealthy back there and a hard hitter. Like I said, I'm kind of a standout on special teams as well as defense. So kind of a, um, you know, multiple cause there for, for Waggle to kind of get his name out there. Um, but doing th- uh, those in both areas tonight. Well, that's going to, we're three minutes to the second half kickoff. Hey, I just want to give a shout out to the homecoming uh, King Roman Housen, the homecoming queen, Mackenzie Clydesdale. Congratulations on winning the 2023 homecoming uh, king and queen as they had been voted on from their peers during the week at NCHS. So a good performance by the dance team and uh, a good performance by the band. So uh, the North Blue Jays with a 28-6 to lead here going into the third quarter. So we're going to Send it back to the station. A few words from our sponsors. You've been listening to KQNK 106.7 AM and FM North. Fit to Go is your fitness destination for a healthier, happier you. At Fit to Go, they're more than just a gym. They're your fitness family. The state of art of equipment is there to help you reach your goals, whether it's shredding pounds, building muscle, or boosting your energy. They're a small gym with a big heart. They know your name, your story, and your fitness journey because they're there to support your every step of the way. Fit to Go. Join today. Fit to Go, where fitness meets family. United Northwest Federal Credit Union proudly supports our local athletes and wishes them good luck this season. At United Northwest Federal Credit Union, we work hard every day to make life a little better for you, your family, and our community. When you need to open a checking or savings account, get a new debit card or credit card, apply for a personal, auto, or mortgage loan, or seek financial advice, United Northwest Federal Credit Union is here for you with better and more personal service. For more information, visit unwfcu.org. Equal housing lender in NCUA insured. If you're hearing a little strange noise from your vehicle, it's time that you give your car some TLC. At Ingo Sales and Service, they have a great selection of parts and accessories, and their expert mechanics will help you with your car maintenance and repairs. So swing by Ingo Sales and Service, where your car deserves the best, and they've got it for you. Drive in, drive out, and drive happy with Ingo Sales and Service, your best car's friend. Visit them today at 209 West Lincoln in Norton. Are you ready to build your dream project and equip your home with the latest appliances? At Cowpoke Supply, they offer a wide variety of high-quality lumber, from sturdy hardwoods to durable softwoods, ensuring your project is built to last. Cowpoke's appliance department features top-of-the-line household appliances from trusted brands. Whether you're upgrading your kitchen or refreshing your laundry room, they have it all. Visit them today on East Highway 36 in Norton. Cowpoke Supply, where your dreams take shape and your home comes to life. 
Iron Insurance Partners of Norton, Kansas is stronger together and offering to insure what matters most to you. Full service insurance with friendly hometown faces. Whether you're looking for agriculture, commercial, homeowners, or auto insurance, they can help. Stop in at 117 North Kansas or call 877-4016. Open Monday through Friday from 8 till 5. Iron Insurance Partners of Norton, stronger together and offering to insure what matters most to you. Norton County Hospital and Medical Clinics would like to wish our Blue Jays and Huskies the best of luck this school year. Remember to please wear your safety gear properly and stay plenty hydrated. Parents, we want to remind you that our medical clinic is here to keep your athletes healthy year-round. Our physical therapy department is also available to help students perform at their very best. Call the medical clinic at 785-877-3305 or physical therapy at 785-874-2222. Go fight win and make Norton County proud. At New Age Industrial, we take great pride in our aluminum products by designing and manufacturing cutting-edge equipment for a variety of industries while maintaining the highest level of customer service. We're a global aluminum extruder and fabricator and one of the area's largest employers. Not only do we take great pride in our products, but we're also proud supporters of the area's students and athletes. We'll be cheering them on all season long. To learn more, visit us online at newageindustrial.com. With unlimited guesses, I bet you still can't name everything available for your farm, vehicle, and more at Roy Sells and Service in Norton. Owners Brian and Kate Fondon still are proud to serve Norton and the surrounding area. They have interstate batteries, auto parts, oil, welding supplies, DeWalt and Milwaukee power tools, kids' farm toys, farm equipment supplies, and so much more. Come out and see everything at Roy Sells and Service on East Highway 36. You won't believe how much they have for you right here in Norton. Yep, it's that time of year again. As the seasons change, so does your health and wellness needs. At Moffitt Drug, they've got you covered from head to toe. If you're feeling under the weather, no worries. The friendly pharmacists are there to help you find the perfect remedies for those pesky fall colds and allergies. And don't forget to get your flu shots and essential vitamins to stay in tip-top shape all season long. Remember, your health is their top priority at Moffitt Drug, downtown Norton, where autumn meets wellness. Welcome back to Travis Field at Dick Boyd Stadium as the North Blue Jays with a 28 to 6 lead. One minute back until the second half kickoff. The Blue Jays have scored in that first half on their first three possessions. Then penalty set in for the Blue Jays. But then it was settling in and the Blue Jays were playing some great defense, intercepting a ball or two and and creating havoc for that uh, offense of the Goodland Cowboys. Again, our score 28 to 6 here as the Blue Jays had deferred the first half to the second half where they most likely they'll take the ball here in the second half. Yeah, Blue Jays playing extremely well that first half. Like I said, got off to a fast start. I just hope that continues here in the second half. Sometimes, you know, when there's a score differential like this, they can kind of let the their, their foot off the gas a little bit. But the Cowboys, I thought, kind of pepped it up there in the second quarter and are trying to make this a ball game. So if the Blue Jays um, don't continue to keep that down, um, the Cowboys are looking for any opening they can get. Right. You know, and I we talked about Lincoln Kirby and uh, their secret weapon, and I, I bet we're going to see a little bit more of them. Um, I, I think they like going deep with them, but wouldn't surprise me that they come across the middle uh the second half. So we'll see if Kerr is involved in that or not. And then, uh, you know, Cecito and Goodwin are some very quality backs. I think that's a good call, Fig. We haven't really seen him gone over the middle. He, like I said, he's been split out. But I wouldn't surprise, like you, you said, to see him uh, attempt that over the middle as well. What did you do? What did I do? Yeah, you dropped some. Me? No? Yeah, you just. There we go. Oh. <laughs> as we're. The quarter second half. On yep, and it's going to be a high kick taken at the 20 yard line by Backman. Backman trying to get out. It sees a hole. Cuts back to the outside, but he's going to tip up at the 46 yard line of the Blue Jays. Man, he turned yeah, on. He the did. Pit. Oh, I, I love to see the ball in Backman's hand, especially with a little bit of green grass in front of him because he's so, uh, so elegant out there, you know, with those long strides um, that he can make up ground in a hurry. Yeah, he caught that on the 20. 
and was able to bring it up to the 46 of the Blue Jays. Nice run back by Tyler Backman. I think maybe he just kept running towards the sideline. He might have been just a little bit better. Back to the I formation. Twins to the far side. Single receiver to the near side. Eli Jones underneath center. Take a look again at his right side. Maybe changing the play up. And it's going to be handed in there to Backman. Backman tries to go off the right tackle. It's not going to get anywhere. Right back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, no room for Backman there. Kind of sniffed that out. I don't know. I'm thinking that Eli seen that they didn't send that uh, other linebacker or safety that way. So he thought maybe that, uh, or he did, they did send it that way. That's why he wanted to switch to the running game. Second and 10 for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays with a 28-6 to lead. Melvin to the near side. Bodie Fun still to the far side. And again, it's going to be Jones looking down. Has an open man. That's going to be Hauser. They still get the first and ten. Yeah, nice pitch and catch in there from Jones to Hauser. Hauser pretty much um, open for football consideration there. Hauser, really no one around him. Great first, job by Eli to find him downfield. First and ten with 11.05 left here in the third quarter. 28-6 to six lead for the Blue Jays. As Bodie Bonham still splits to the far side, Tyson on the new, near side. Willard, the fullback, and Backman, the tailback. Underneath centers, Eli Jones. There's a pitch out in there to Backman. Backman trying to follow his block, breaks it out, runs. There's a flag on the play, and it's going to be a, a push in the back or a holding on the Blue Jays. Yeah, that's a nice blocking up front. I think Backman heard you because he's taking it to the sideline that time. Yeah. Pushing it up field. It's going to be holding on the Blue Jays as Roman Hauser was pleading his case. Blue Jays trying to get off to a fast start to start this second half as well. Look for maybe a I haven't really seen it going too far still yet. See, Brody, Brody usually uh, might be an option down here at this part of the field. Yeah, you know, Brody, he's got he's got some good quality catches on the year, and mm-hmm. uh, you know they haven't really taken a look at him tonight. But uh, maybe that might be the opportunity to go to now, as they are in single coverage, man to man, man to man coverage over there on that far side. Shotgun formation for the Blue Jays. It's going to be Jones keeping the ball. He cuts back across the middle, and he's going to get up to about the 30, 42 yard line. Got most of those penalty yards back, plus some. Now makes it second and nine for the Blue Jays. As he was able to cut back, and that middle was pretty open. He is. Like I said, he's so good at hiding that ball. You can't tell whether he handed it off, is going to pitch it, or he's going to take it in. I mean, he's pretty deadly at either option. Bonner still to the far side. Melvin to the near side. Eli comes up underneath center. Going to hand it in to the backman. Backman off the left tackle. Has room to run. Cuts back. Still on his feet as he keeps driving. Backman actually ran into the back of a of a would-be tackler, bounced off of him, and was able to keep his legs churning downfield for a few extra yards. Let's see. That's uh, He's going to be down at the 24-yard line. 18-yard run in there for Tyler Backman. Backman, I think he's now feeling comfortable exploding off that tackle instead of just kind of looking and, and gingerly walking his way through there. He just knows that he's going to get yardage if he can just uh, turn on those jets. Willauer and Backman in the backfield, and it's going to be a counter in there to Willauer. Willauer carrying a couple players on their back. Wow, Willauer uh, probably had contact really close to the line of scrimmage. And, you know, rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, dragging uh, would-be tacklers about five or six yards uh, for that gain. Ferrer's helmet come off, and he'll have to come up, and that's one of their bigger back, bigger linemen. So let's see if the Blue Jays are going to expose that side 
uh, where Herrera was. Yeah, the yards after contact uh, is just phenomenal for Willauer down there because he was contacted right away. Looks like they have Kerr on the tight end. But it's got... There's a pitch in there to Backman. Backman's going to get up to about the 15. As I say, they have... Like Kerr is kind of... His job is to watch the tight end because our normal tight end is Roman Hauser. But in there that time, it was Brennan Fonnett still. Yeah, not much gain on that play, but got a couple yards. Third and two now for the Blue Jays as the ball rests off off the 16-yard line of Goodland. They're going to really put Tyson Melvin way out there on that far side. Blue Jays have been doing it in the run game here. One pass, I think, in this series. Eli again to Backman. Backman up that left tackle, and he's still on his feet, carrying a couple Goodland Cowboys across the 10 up to about the 8. Yeah, great blocking. Uh, Corbin Puga pulling guard in there on that one able to make some room there is some laundry on the field and it's where it's laying it could have been like a face mask yeah, it, it, in that position Yeah, sure looks like it Yeah, dead ball personal foul Goodland yeah Corbin Puga from that right guard position pulling on that really making some room for the running back First and goal for the Blue Jays as they'll put the ball at just off the five yard line. 7.58 left in the third quarter. 28 to 6 is our score. The Blue Jays with the lead. Let's see what they have called. Called Eli Jones' number. Nope. It's going to be Backman. As Backman can't get into the end zone, he'll get like one yard on the play. Yeah, Backman slammed down hard by number 50 Nash uh, yeah. Notchdegale Notch yeah. Notch yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah freshman defensive tackle for Goodland if his fa- family's listening they're probably torturing us right now <laughs> that could have been 56 <laughs> yeah. those numbers are hard to read yep Trips out to the far side for the Blue Jays shotgun formation. Off to the left of Eli Jones is Willauer. Willauer with a big block, and there's a penalty flag out on the play. Boy, what a crushing block oh, he that did. Willauer had yeah. there. Willauer just destroyed his man. Looks like it's going to be against the Blue Jays. Holding on the Blue Jays, and that looked like the left side of the line there. Which is the opposite way the play went, so really no need to hold in that scenario. Well, and you know, the thought, though, is that how many times, what's the percentage that Jones cuts back? <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. It's such a quick-hitting play, though. That, that, but that, we, I can see that hole open up from down oh, here. Yeah, well. So, yeah, Jones... Had a gaping hole to run through. Although, to your point, he does has the ability and does cut back extremely well. But with that killer block, oh yeah, that Will Hour had, boy, he's gonna walk in there and maybe got a coke on the way. Shotgun formation for the Blue Jays as well as uh, Jones rolls out this right, fumbles the ball, but it's gonna be picked up in there by. 69, Mullins, who played a little bit of running back because uh, I, I, it almost looked like a shovel pass until you said he fumbled it because I thought he was trying to shovel pass that um, to uh, a running back there. I was really expecting um, or you heard Logan game. Willauer to be there, and it was Mullins. Yeah. Cause it looked M- like a shovel pass from here. Mullins with four yards on the play. M- what I said – when we went down with our skilled players, Mullen stepped up and was the running back yes. and tied in for us in the last part of the season Very true. last year. He has abilities. Trips to the far side for the Blue Jays. Single receiver, man in motion. That's going to be a jet sweep. And it's going to be handed in there to Jones. Jones is just going to keep it, run up the middle, get up to about the five. Jones calls his own number for a nice four-yard gain and bring up fourth and five for the Blue Jays. Fourth and goal now 
And the ball rests on the five-yard line. Tyce Melvin coming off to the side. Coach Melvin says, we're going for it. Jones pretty dangerous with his ball in his hands. Like I said, you just never know if he's going to pitch it, throw it, or run it because he's extremely good at all three of those. 5.39 remaining in the third quarter. 28-6 to six is our score as the Blue Jays will send trips to the near side. Trips to the far side. Shotgun formation. 5.30 on the clock. And as Jones gets it off, and it's a tip ball in there by Goodland. That's going to be turnover. The ball on down for the Goodland Cowboys first and 10 at, from their five-yard line. I couldn't tell if the Cowboy got in there and tipped it or if that went off uh, Tice's shoulder pad. Well, I think it was underthrown, and, yeah. and Goodland reached up there and tipped it, and uh, Tice wasn't able to come up with any of any of it. Didn't even get a touch, I don't believe. You must have been good coverage on Roman Hauser. That's usually his area of the field. Tice is more of the deep threat, but uh, couldn't quite connect there with Tice Melvin. First and ten for Goodland at their own five-yard line. 28-6 to six our score. Probably a heavy dose of running right here. It's going to be taken in there eight. by number eight, good one. Old Mullins stood him right up, right past the line of scrimmage. I tell you what, Mullins gets his hands on that jersey. He just absolutely must have the grip of death on there because he does not let go. Well, looked like uh, also Brennan Fawn is still in on the mix there, too. He come up a little gimpy. Yeah, Mullins just kind of stood him up, had him by the, by the jersey, and then Fawn still came in for cleanup. Really like to see the gang tackling in there. Everybody, uh, you know, meeting at the ball, help bringing the, those ball carriers down. Second and eight for Goodland as they look to advance that ball. And it's going to be a, a counter move in there. And it's going to be Mullins again grabbing that jersey. Can't see who their ball carrier was. It was, it was a reversal in there. Yeah, Eli Jones in there as well. Facito. It's like a gain of two on the play. One. One yard. Depending on where they marked the ball, I guess, but 410 left in the third. Ball on the nine yard line, 358 left here in this third quarter as going to be a pass play and it's going to be intended receiver it's going to be number nine Cicito and it was incomplete the Blue Jays will get the ball back I'm not for sure if that's a a score update uh, Beloit leading Phillipsburg 40 to 24 with 416 left in the third Phillipsburg making a little comeback Back for the Blue Jays is Melvin. Wow. There's flags on the play. And Melvin calls a fair catch, takes it on the Goodland 45-yard line. Holding against the Cowboys. Holding Goodland. Blue Jays will decline it. As they take over first and 10 at the Goodland 45-yard line. That Blue Jays defense stingy once again. Extremely good job by that defensive front for the Blue Jays, led in there by Mullins on that series. Three forty-four left to go in the third. Blue Jays lead the Cowboys twenty-eight to six. This is going to be given to Willauer. Willauer on the run, steps over one, gets the first and ten up to the thirty-two yard line. Yeah, Willauer runs so low. You know, expecting, actually looking like he wanting contact down there, but able to, like I said, able to kind of hop step over one and uh, get a nice gain of that out of that. 
17 on the play, I believe, isn't it? Here, Nish, uh, we're going to take that clock off for a little bit. we got to change the battery in there. All right, Blue Jays come up to the line. Tice Melvin split to the near side. Cody Fawn still to the far side. Eli under center. Eli snaps the ball, takes the ball, hands it off to Backman. Tyler Backman off the right side for a nice game. Game about what? Looks like they might mark it 11 yards. Yeah, it might be a first down. Blue Jay first down. First down for the Blue Jays. On about the 20, 22 yard line of the Cowboys. Blue Jays kind of moving downfield with ease with the run game leading the way. Okay, Blue Jays are going to come up with the ball. Tyce Melvin to the near side. Bodie Fonestiel to the far side. Eli Jones under center. We're trying to change out. The- Blue Jays taking their time, snap the ball, give it off to Bagman. That looked like a face mask there. Bagman met in the backfield. Bagman tackled for no gain. They were Cowboys ready for that this time. Had some nice penetration right over the center. Get Backman for loss of four. Loss of four, Tyler Backman. A Hauser comes in, brings play in. And Brennan Fawn still comes out for the Blue Jays. So they're switching out tight ends. As we mentioned in the class of 20. 20- 2003 here tonight as they stand out on the track tonight if you're watching from the stands. Slant pass in there to Melvin. Melvin tries to come across and there's a flag on the play because that's going to be unsportsmanlike as he grabs around the head. Yeah, it kind of tossed them to the ground unsportsmanlike. You know, like I said, right right around the head helmet area. is only going to probably be five yards only on that, but it'll be from the spot of the foul. Yeah, Tice, yeah, pretty uh, pretty shifty down there, so I understand wanting to get both hands on him. But Oh, they're going to call a face mask. I don't yeah. think it was a face mask. It was around the head area, but it was around, yes. Might have even been in the back of the helmet. Um, like I said, it had him. Like a horse collar. Yeah. yeah. Now it's going to be, how's it going to be just, uh wide receiver this time is Melvin again in the slot. They have moved from the safety up, changed their defense up a little bit. Second and four for the Blue Jays, and it's going to be Will Lauer. Will Lauer, he's going to size up one and two and get into the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, Will Lauer with the sidestep and the bull, bulldoze at the end. Kind of would not be denied for those six points. Logan will all run tough down there tonight. And I think that ball was on his hip yeah. <laughs> because I think it was knocked out or touched by yeah. a, a defender, and he reached back and pulled that off his hip. Yeah, Will Auer just running extremely tough down there up the middle, getting getting those hard yards, but extremely hard running in there by Logan Will Auer. 135 remaining here in the third quarter. Blue Jay score on a, what was that, Nish, five yards? <laughs> 15-yard, gosh, I didn't even pay attention. 15-yard <laughs> run by Logan Willar. Extra point was good at the 136 mark. You've been listening to KQK 106.7 AM and FM North. You're not just a mom or dad. To the people who count on you, you're a superhero. Your Farm Bureau agent, Joy Johnson, knows heroes like you don't get sick days. But did you know that if you do become unable to care for yourself, your life insurance could come to the rescue? It's true, our permanent life insurance with the Daily Living Writer can provide the funds you need to keep things running while you recover. Contact me, Joy Johnson, your Farm Bureau agent, to learn more about how you can use life insurance while you're living. Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company. Rev up your engine and hit the road with confidence. Norton Auto Supply, your CarQuest dealer, is your one-stop shop for all your automotive needs. Whether you're a seasoned mechanic or DIY enthusiast, we've got you covered. From quality replacement parts to essential tools and accessories, Norton Auto Supply has it all for you. The friendly and knowledgeable staff is there to help you find the right parts for your vehicle. Visit your local CarQuest dealer, Norton Auto Supply, today and experience the difference. Norton Auto Supply, keeping you on the road one part at a time. Welcome back to Dick Boyd Stadium. A 15-yard run in there by Logan Willauer. 
as the Blue Jays now lead by a score of 35 to 6 over the Goodland Cowboys. 136 remaining in the third quarter. Mordecai teeing up the ball. Look for a high, high kick here from Trevin. And it's the end over end wobbly kick out of bounds. Boy, it's going to go out probably about the, oh, let's call it about the 38. No, 20. 28. No. It'll be 38, about where he went. Somewhere there. Oh, I'm sorry. It is, it is 38. That uh, flag was... Flag was in 33. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be first and 10 for Goodland at their 39-yard line. See what Goodland throws at him this time. I'm looking for some counters and some reversals. I'm kind of surprised they haven't started going back to the area a little bit. There's a fumble on the play, and it'll be covered up by Goodland. Number eight, good one. Touchdown by number 25, Logan Willauer for the Blue Jays. He was right back in there, so even if he would have uh, handled it correctly, Willauer right on top of him. Must be, still be pumped up from that 15-yard touchdown run. A lot of these guys getting it done from both sides of the ball. Good thing they're having the dance tomorrow night. These guys <laughs> be tired tonight. That's right. Second and 16 now for Goodland. The ball on the 32-yard of Goodland. Under one minute remaining. Number fumbled up on the play again. And there's Will, our, or no, it's uh, Logan Fawn is still with the first contact. Yeah. But three Blue Jays in there, Eli Jones in there as well. Going to bring up third and long for the now, Cowboys. Third and 15 now as they put the ball on the 35. Three-yard gain for the Cowboys. This Blue Jays. Uh, defense continues to shine here in the second in the third quarter. Now they're going to split it out. Yeah, trips to the far side, Kerr to the near side. Thorson in, no, yeah, Thorson in for the Blue Jay, or excuse me, for the Cowboys, and there's going to be a sack. Number fifty-seven, Colton oh. Stover, along with Hauser and Mullen. Yeah, Stover able to get back there and grab that jersey on just on his shoulder pad and slammed him to the ground. Nice penetration in there by Colton Stover. That's going to make it. Gosh, where's that ball at? Now it's going to be 22. It was a, it was a 37 yard loss. Yeah. That'll be the end of the third quarter. As we watch the dance routines here by the cheerleaders, we got to watch the dance team at halftime, watch the band. We're here at homecoming week, and I know that they worked a lot. Welcome back to Dick Boyd Stadium. We're hoping that we're back. I didn't realize that they said the radio went to the Royals game. <laughs> Surely they don't take precedent over Blue Jay football, but they might. They may have uh, only put down so much time for us. That might be why. I thought we were going to be done at 9. There's Jack Carter in there now as he pitches it out there to, uh, whoa, Tyler Backman hurdles over one, and he gets the touchdown as he takes the pitch on a fourth and goal situation off from the two-yard line. He hurdles over a defender for the touchdown. Jack Carter with an assist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they'll go for two. Nope, Eli's back in there. I think the cr- it was just a cramp. Well, let's hope so. 41-6, extra point try is down. The kick 
is a line drive and no, no good. good. So the Royal, uh, Royal <laughs> Blue Chase with a 41 to 6 lead with 259 remaining in the ball game. Everyone has a big to-do list nowadays. With a busy schedule, it's easy to forget about yourself. Don't neglect your dental health. Schedule a quick and easy dental checkup with Dr. Shirt. They're open Monday through Thursdays, 8.30 to 5. Call and set up an appointment today at 785-877-2821 or stop in at 205 South Kansas in Norton. Dr. Shirk and his staff are ready to get your smile looking its best. Welcome back to Dick Boyd Stadium. Like we mentioned, we're getting reports that we have switched to the Royals game. I'm, I'm hoping that's not the case, but uh, I don't know if anybody can confirm that. That uh, the Royals are on. It wouldn't be. Well, it could be on the radio. I think we're on. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm delayed, so. Yeah. Two-yard run in there by Tyler Backman as he hurdles his defender to get the touchdown. 2.59 remaining in the ball game. The extra point was no good. And there's a nice kick in there by Mordecai, and it's going to be taken in there by nine. nine. Oh. And it's going to be brought down in there by number 54, the Blue Jays. 58. 58. Oh, 58, Nick Carnes. Nick Carnes went flying through there. Had a defender on him as well. Well, Nick. And <laughs> Nick's all excited. He's and, going back in there. Junior Barcy's going in now. As well he should be. Nick Corns, the defender on him, makes a solo tackle. Was that uh, a good one? Team. Was that good one with the nine? Oh, it was Tocito? He was getting ahead of speed, too. Yeah, he was. cut that off immediately. As a junior varsity... Players. Some of them are in there. Oh, there's a nice tackle in there by Brendan Fonestill. He's seen that right off the start. He comes back deep from his middle linebacker position to make that tackle. Only one yard gain in there. Brendan Fonestill, leading tackler for that Blue Jay defense, and that's the exact reason why. He has a nose for the football, and he doesn't mind getting in there and making those hard hits. They bring him off the field now. Logan Fonestill, the other linebacker, he's off the field. I'm not sure is there a varsity player out there. And there's going to be a, a reverse in there. Nice job by the Blue Jays filling the gap over there. Five. Five? 75. Number 75. Cope rails back with the tackle for the Blue Jays. <laughs> Who called his name once tonight? Yeah, a couple times now. Third and six, 155 remaining in the ball game. Low snap, and it's picked up there by Cecilia. He gets rid of it, and it's going to be taken, caught by Richards or Johnson. Coverage is going to be by number 80, Caden Enfield. Fourth down, fourth and four now for Goodland as they're going to drop back to punt. And yeah, nice job by that uh, Blue Jays JV to hold them to six yards on those three downs. Low snap. Line drive kick. Blue Jays don't have anybody back there. They'll let it go. Does take a good one bounce. Going to be down on the 40-yard line of Norton. As the junior varsity offense will go in there now. Is they're going to... Are they calling timeout? I'm not for sure. Must have. Coach Melvin going out there and explaining that, hey, all we need is 10, 10 uh, yards to get another first down. Oh, 
Exploits uh, got the lead over Phillsburg, 48 to 24. 43 seconds left in the ball game. There, looks like Boyd's going to come home to win. That's our, our next opponent next week. It will be the Beloit Trojans as the Blue Jays will travel to Beloit. Let's see who's underneath center now. Jack Carter underneath center. He takes a snap and like, got a little bit of a jump there. And like I mentioned, this is Jack's first time to play this year. Yeah, the first time I've seen him suited up on the sidelines was tonight. So I'm sure that the cadence is something that they haven't heard that much, other than they were practicing, I'm sure, with Jack underneath center a couple times. First and 15 for the Blue Jays. Carter underneath center hands it over to... Uh, number 20, that Raglan? Uh, yeah, it's going to be Traxton Raglan. It'll uh, be a loss of one on the play. Now make it second and 16. 110 remaining here in the ball game. They'll split a receiver to the far side. That'll be Key Sweater to the near side. He is never that much by Miles. And a rollout by Jack. Goes downfield, has a receiver. Oh. His receiver, that's Raglan. He got yeah, bent. he did. Bent over. Oh, no, that's 80. 80. That's going to be Caden Infield. Man, as he got laid over, bent backwards. I think we end up calling him Gumby now. <laughs> yeah, he's limping. He, he's coming out now with a little bit of a limp. A little hitch in his step. You have trouble getting up there. Yeah. How much was that uh, catch? Nice pass in there by Carter. 19-yard pass completion from Jack Carter to Caden Infield. It's going to be 33 for the Blue Jays. And that's going to be Jarrett Bonestill. He's going to get a couple yards on the play. Eight seconds left in this ball game. That should do it for the evening as the North Blue Jays will go with the go away with a 41 to six win over the Goodland Cowboys as they go five and zero. Oh. They go five and zero oh on the year. Goodland will drop to one and four as the Northern Blue Jays will be traveling to Beloit next week. We're going to hear a few words of sponsors, and then we will cover the second half and the total first half also. Too much football? <laughs> There's no such thing. Especially not when Next Tech has you covered with the fastest internet and the best combination of streaming and live TV. Get gig speed internet and deluxe TV now for just $175 per month for the perfect football watching experience. You'll never have to choose which game to watch. Next Tech lets you catch them all, buffer free at an unbeatable price. Don't miss the action. Get started at next-tech.com today. Precision under pressure. That's what area students and athletes strive for every day. And Natoma Manufacturing Corporation strives to produce the highest quality products, along with great communication in their drive to achieve their goals. Natoma Manufacturing Corporation wishes the best for all of the area students and athletes this school year and wherever they are going in life. Good luck and have fun out there from Natoma Manufacturing Corporation, located on East Highway 36 in Norton. When you think of insurance, you automatically think house and car insurance. And sure, we at Boxer Insurance can help you choose the best option for these. But did you know that Boxer Insurance Agency also specializes in business insurance, farm insurance, life insurance, and even Medicare supplemental insurance? That's why we're known as the insurance store. Everything you need under one roof. Contact us today at 877-5128 or stop by our office located at 108 North 1st in Norton. 
Stock up and save at your Jamboree on sale this week. Boston Butt Pork Roast, $1.78 a pound. Casey Strip Steak, nine ninety eight a pound. Five pound bag red or gold best choice potatoes, two ninety eight each. New crop honey crisp apples, $1.98 a pound. Select varieties Frito Lay Doritos, three ninety eight each. And select varieties best choice ice cream, just two ninety eight each. Enjoy these savings and more this week at your Jamboree Foods with locations in Norton and and Hill City. The power of the bear, the stealth of a cougar, and the endurance and strength of a Mustang. That's what you'll find in the ATVs and UTVs at Norton Sports Center. At Norton Sports Center, you can find just what you need, and they know how to care for them when you need service. Give your hunting an edge this year when you know you can trust the ATV or UTV that will get you where you want to go. Find your advantage at Norton Sports Center located on West Highway 36 in Norton, or give them a call at 785-877-5452. Welcome back to Travis Field, Dick Boyd Stadium as the Norton Blue Jays get a homecoming win with a 41-6 win over the Goodland Cowboys. Norton now going 5-0 and on the year as the Goodland Cowboys go 1-4. and The uh, scoring went a little bit like this tonight, a four-yard run by Eli Jones. Extra point was good, making a score 7 to nothing with 7-17 left in the first. And it was a 25-yard pass from Eli Jones to Roman Hauser. The extra point was good, our 14 to nothing, 242 left in the first. Then it was a 65-yard pass from Eli Jones to Tice Melvin. The extra point good, 21 to nothing, with 49 seconds left in the first. One-yard run by Jesus Tecito, two-point conversion, no good. Goodland put six on the board. Our score 21 to six, 10-22 in the first half. Five-yard run by Tyler Backman after an interception by Jayton Weigel. The extra point was good, 28-6, to 6, 6.50 left in the first half. 15-yard run by Logan Willauer, and then an extra point was good, 35-6, to 6, 136 left in the third. And the one-yard run by Tyler Backman, the extra point is no good, leaving our score at 41-6 to 6 with 2.59 in the fourth. The, score, the uh, Blue Jays at quarterback, it was Eli Jones, 10 for 14 for 149 yards and two touchdowns. Number 15, Jack Carter was one for one for 19 yards. A total of 168 yards and two touchdowns for the Blue Jays on the total passing. In the running game, is Tyler Backman, 20 carries for 106 yards, two TDs. And then it was... Uh, Eli Jones, 10 carries for 53 yards and one touchdown. Logan Willauer, 5 carries for 54 and one touchdown. Logan Bonestill, 3 carries for 23 yards. Brody Mullins, 1 carry for 4 yards. Colin Cox, actually that was uh, Raglan, was the 1 carry for negative 3. And then it was Jared Bonestill, 1 for 3. Ashton Katz, uh, 1 for 2 yards. 242 yards on the ground tonight for the Blue Jays, a total of, uh, oh, that's receiving, I'm sorry. Well, you have, okay, of 168 for receiving. Total yardage, 410 yards for the evening. Uh, 42 rushing plays, 15 passing, 57 total for the Blue Jays and six touchdowns. So the uh, Blue Jays with 41 points there. At Goodland, they had Zach Thorson 6 for 13 on 100 yards and one interception. It was uh, Goodwin, Chayton Goodland, Goodwin 1 for 5, excuse me, 1 for 5 with 3 yards, and it was Jesus Cicito 1 for 1 for negative 2. Total passing yards, 101 yards for the Cowboys. In the running game is Chayton Goodwin, 14 carries for 6 yards. Zach Thorson, six carries for negative 16. Michael Johnson, four carries for six. Jesus Cicito, three carries for no yards there. Um, and it was a good one with the one touchdown. Total rushing a negative four. In the receiving, it was Jayton Quain, three catches for 25 yards. It was Jesus Cicito, two carries for 37. Leighton Kerr, one carry, one catch for 38. Yeah, one, yeah 38. Michael Johnson, one for three, well, three yards. Clayton, <coughs> excuse me, good one. One catch for one, 
<coughs> I can't see it, and I can't stop coughing. And uh, for two yards, and Purvis uh, targeted twice, 101 total yards in passing. Uh, 27 rushes for Goodland and 19 passes, 46 plays in there for the Blue Jets or for the Cowboys. So something that we haven't seen for a little while is the rushing game, Trent, and uh, it was a nice thing to watch. Oh yeah, extremely nice thing to watch. Like I said, Backman, I think, building confidence uh, every game. Will our run run running tough as usual? We, we expect to see that Logan now getting those tough yards up the middle. But um, you know, Tyler Backman, like I said, building confidence. I believe each and every single game, we're seeing him uh, uh, get more confident up the middle. Um, you know, almost inviting contact now, where we didn't always see that from him in the past, but. Um, played extremely well down there. Um, Logan, Logan Fonstil with some nice runs as well. Um, like I said, I feel like um, we got off to a, a, a quick start um, to begin the game and to begin the halftime. So we need to continue that in the next week. But um, what a great win for the Blue Jays here on their home field. The stands were packed. Um, couldn't be more ha- uh, happy with the way they played. Really a team effort down there. Um, you know, a number of guys making making plays down there for the Blue Jays tonight. Can't really single any, anybody out. Eli had a, had a good game like usual. Um, he's just such a, a dual threat down there. Um, you know, and then, the, you know, homecoming king Hauser, I thought he played extremely well. And, and just uh, several Blue Jays chipping in down there to make it a team win. You know, I mean, Coach, we there's numerous people we can name. I know if I start naming right. them, I'll forget that's, somebody. That's why I didn't want to start, too. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, Brennan Fonstil in his middle yeah. linebacker position did great. Uh, seen Infield doing, or Trevin Infield doing a great job. Uh, both the defensive ends were coming in doing great. Uh, we've seen Mullins, uh, Mullins you know, yeah. he, he uh, played uh, up to way above his potential. Well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe that not. is. Maybe we're just seeing it. Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, maybe the, this mid-season thing for the Blue Jays is really uh, getting them to drink in the Kool-Aid, you know, you know, biting in there, knowing what they they need to be doing at all times. So it was a great win for them. Uh, I was actually kind of uh, nervous about this game today, based off of Goodland and Norton face off in the Jamboree. Uh, of course, you don't show anything, you know, to the opposite team. Other, you know, let's go student body left, student body right, you know. Right. Uh, so, you know, I was a little worried about it, knowing that Goodland uh, changed up some of their offense. So, uh, hopefully that, uh, you know, that they didn't see the film uh, yeah. on the Blue right. Jays. So, a uh, good win for them, 41-6. to six And uh, a, a great confidence builder midseason right now, you know. Uh, nothing to nothing to play for other than just to get out there and play. I mean, you know, this wasn't a district game. This wasn't a league game. Uh, this is just to keep us fresh and, and work on some things uh, throughout the year. So the next week, uh, Blue Jays will be traveling over to Beloit. They'll start up their second district game. Beloit, a big winner tonight. Over yeah, the big, big Panthers. Winner. Yeah. So, uh, you know, they're going to. And they, they, Beloit um, is playing tough. They're playing some good football. football. I got some word from over there that they're, that they, uh, they're a tough team. So we're going to be going at, at Beloit. But. You talked about Blue Jays drinking the Kool-Aid, and I think that, that's exactly what they're doing. This defense, um, they're starting to believe in themselves. I mean, they've they played some good football down there. And like I said, uh, when, when iron sharpens iron, when they're playing against this offense, um, you know, it, it sharpens both sides of the ball. But this defense believes in themselves. They're drinking the Kool-Aid. And you, we're seeing different players step up each week, um, you know, Jaden Wagel with with the, with the interception tonight. Just you know, like I said, we we talked about Mullins and you know different guys are seeing these other players stepping up and they want their turn. So um, I expect to see more out of that defense as we continue along. Again, the uh, Blue Jays with a big win tonight here over the Goodland Cowboys. So we're going to go ahead and let you go and let you know that we're going to be on the road now as we had three straight home games and. Now we're on the road three straight times as we will be traveling to Beloit, TMP, and Russell. So it's kind of, you know, in See order for the playoffs, right? It's right, and those will all be for the playoffs, seating yeah. for the playoffs. So the Blue Jays do want to be in that driver's seat. They do want to host a home game. They don't want to be on the road like the last couple of years where we've had to go to Lakin or Cimarron. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we we don't want to be that traveling right. team. I mean, we've done our share. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so. Right. Uh, you know, like I said, we're going to go ahead and let you go. 
pre- be prepared next week as we travel to Beloit. Uh, it'll probably be a 7 o'clock game, but we'll try to get uh, things running for you over there as we'll meet up with our sister station uh, down there uh, and hopefully uh, get some few tips from them uh, and see how That's things right. go. So, again, uh, Blue Jays with a big win tonight, 41-6 to over the um, – Goodland Cowboys. For Nish Millen, for Trent Alexander, I'm Fig Millen for KQNK 